No! Really, Bruno, again? We talked about this. Greetings Internet, it's Dustin again with my home kit home and in today's video we're continuing our series on automations, this time looking at automations that we can use with contact sensors. Now, there are some pretty unique things that we can do with contact sensors, however in this video we'll be looking at how we can turn on a light once a door has been opened and how to reverse that and turn off the light once that door has been closed. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to the E for HomeKit app and when we launch the app we land on the at a glance tab but we want the scenes tab and at the top right we'll see rules and we'll scroll all the way down until we see add rule and here we have a brief explanation of the nomenclature associated with automations in the E for HomeKit app but basically it boils down to this a rule or automation needs to contain at least one trigger and it can contain one or more conditions which when the trigger and conditions are met it sets a scene or multiple scenes into motion. Now that that's taken care of let's go ahead and tap next and we'll add our trigger. Now this trigger is going to be based on of course like we talked about our contact sensor so we'll tap on contact but we can also find it in the room in which the contact sensor is located. So here what we'll do is we'll find our correct contact sensor, mine happens to be in the kitchen, so we'll tap on that and then we want to make sure that we have our correct state, which for me in this case is open, and we'll confirm that there. We can add another trigger if we would like, but at this time we don't need to, but we do want to add some time conditions. And since this is a patio and during the day, well, we don't really need any light outside. So I'll go ahead and add a day event. So we'll tap that. And here we'll start out with saying that after sunset, I think, will be good. And that'll be our first time condition. So what we'll want to do now that we've added our first time condition, we need to end the time condition. So after we tap add, we'll go ahead and add our second time condition. So we'll add time condition. And here you'll notice that we can't actually select day event because it's already been selected for us. And no, look at that. Before and sunrise is also already been selected for us. So that makes things a bit easier. And now that we've confirmed that our time conditions are correct, we'll go ahead and tap next at the top right and we move on to our action. Now in the E for HomeKit app, unlike Apple's Home app, if you want to control just a single accessory, you still need to put it into its own scene, which is then transferred over to Apple's Home app. If you already have a scene that you've created previously that you want to use, by all means. But if you don't, we've got you covered also. So we'll go all the way down to the bottom and tap Add Scene and we want to add an action to that scene. So we'll go ahead and find the room in which we want to control the accessory here. I know we used the kitchen door, but the kitchen door leads out to a patio, so I want the lights in the patio to turn on. So we'll find our patio light and we'll tap that. Something you'll definitely want to keep in mind is that you need to indicate the power state for the bulb. So here we want to make sure that it turns on. We want to choose our color here. We'll choose a white color and I do want it at 100% brightness. So we'll select all of those and tap add. Once we've added all of our accessories and our actions here, we'll go ahead and tap next and we'll name the scene. Now this scene is transferred over to Apple's home app, so go ahead and name it something that you'll remember in case you want to use this scene with Siri in the future in order to do kind of on the fly commands. We'll go ahead and name this one Patio Lights On since that's what it does. And we want to confirm that the correct scene has been selected with the little check mark to the right. And now we need to name the rule itself. While this isn't exactly transferred over to the home app, we want to name it something that's recognizable in case we need to do any troubleshooting in the future. I'll name this one, let's go outside. 
And once we're done, we'll tap, well, done. And just like that, our rule has been created. So we're done. Not quite. We need to reverse this so whenever we close the door, the lights turn off. This automation is essentially the same with a couple of key differences. First is with our trigger. We want to make sure that the state of the trigger is closed, but the conditions will be exactly the same. Another difference is in our scene. We want to make sure that the action that is included in that scene turns off the light, and we'll want to adjust the naming schemes appropriately. And so we'll go ahead and fast forward through it because the rest is really the exact same. And that's how you set up this automation using the E for HomeKit app. But if you feel so inclined to do this using Apple's Home app, we should probably go ahead and look at that. So why don't we jump on over there and see how we can do this with Apple's Home app. And that was quick. So let's go to the Automations tab and tap our plus button at the top right. We'll choose when a sensor detects something. We'll find the correct sensor in the kitchen. We'll make sure that our open state is selected. And we'll look at our time. So since I do only want this to happen at night, we'll tap at night. But I do want this to happen maybe, let's say, 30 minutes before sunset and let's say maybe 30 minutes after sunrise just to make sure that there's enough light for people to be able to see. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'm really not all that concerned that if this door opens and my wife and I aren't home, that the person can see what's going on on the patio. So I'm going to make sure I choose when somebody is home under our people conditions so that that doesn't happen. And our next step is to choose our accessories or our scene. So like we said before in Apple's home app, we can actually choose just one accessory. So I'll go ahead and go down to the patio and choose the light that's there. All right, now that we've gotten that selected, we'll tap next. And here by long pressing on the accessory itself, we can kind of manipulate some of its particular actions. So I'll make sure that the brightness is at 100% and that it's the right color that I want. We can also decide if we want to turn off this automation after a specific period of time, but I already know how I'm going to do that. And what a brilliant segue into the next automation. And in fact, this automation really is pretty simple. The only things that we'll want to change from the previous automation are the trigger state. So we'll change it from open to closed. And then also the action, right? So the accessory that we're using, we want to make sure that it goes off so that any time that the door is closed, well, the lights turn off. Seems pretty simple, doesn't it? So as you can see, these contact sensors really do have a pretty practical use in terms of turning on and off lights automatically. Now, I know they're not the flashiest or the, the most impressive in terms of that wow factor, but they really do go a long way in adding that little bit of magic to your home with home automation. There really are tons of different ways that we can use contact sensors and we can really be creative with them. I'd like to hear from you. How do you use contact sensors in your HomeKit setup? Let us know in the comments down below. Also in the description box, you can find links to all the products that we use to make today's video, including the Eve door and window, as well as the Philips Hue light system. Also in the description box, you can find a link to the blog over at My HomeKit Home, as well as links to our social media where we have all sorts of different HomeKit related content. If you did find the video useful, we would appreciate a big thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe. Well, that about does it for me today. Until next time, this has been Dustin with My HomeKit Home.